So welcome back guys. In the previous video we talked about Neo4j and we defined our Neo4j on the data layer as uh, for our database that we're going to use in our application that we're building on Docker. So uh, today we are going to come to a really interesting topic which is the perfect topic that should, you must know like it's an essential for Docker, right? So if you remember or if you just look at the Docker logo I would like to just give you a better reminder that yeah what do you guys understand by this docker logo the docker logo just says you that okay there is a ship that is taking all your containers and in that container you have your applications right this is what all what it means so as we defined our container and node.js backend was a different container which was running on a port and now we will define neo for a in another different container we will running on another pod and then we will communicate between them and uh, that's the, the idea behind it now how to uh, tell docker that these are related things you know like neo 4 j for me is i'm using it for my node.js back and not for my um another application which i'm developing in that net core right so how do you tell docker that so for that, Docker Compose is the solution. So if you even look at the uh, picture here, it will def it will show you a good explanation for it, right? So there is a octopus which has multiple hands, and these can be our uh, placeholders for containers, and it is carrying a containers, and somehow is providing you a connection between them, right? And that's the idea behind Docker Compose. Just like you can. Define one Docker Compose file, and then you can just write all the instructions to it, which that, okay, this is my application, this is its Docker Compose file, and I'm just going to run this Docker Compose, and it will run all the containers which are required by my application, basically all the microservices which are uh, required by, uh, uh, you know, your application. So like Neo4j container, Node.js backend container, Node.js frontend container, and all these things. So without talking further, this time we are going to talk about uh, uh, having some Neo4j uh, built into our application. So let's get it and let's start by doing a Docker Compose file, right? So, oh, I'm sorry, guys, this is another project. You can just ignore it. Uh, in fact, I will just put it on my second screen. And here we have our uh, state where we left off last time, right? So I would like to just tag what containers we are running currently. So we are running containers, Mongo, nothing related to what we did last time, right? But I'm sure we have some images for it. Yeah, we have Neo4j image ready there, built time, right? So then let's start building a Docker Compose file. Now I told you the idea behind Docker Compose would be just to compose our different containers, right? So here you see there's a backend folder, there's a frontend folder. Of course, we should define a complete application in here, which we haven't yet. We will define application, it's all but done and it's running on 405 as you remember. So I'm going to say, of course, I'm not gonna tell, I'm not gonna go online in production and I'm just gonna say, oh, let's, run this Docker file, this Docker file, this Docker file, and run 10 containers. No, of course, I'm going to write a Docker Compose file, which will do the job for me for all the containers. So let's do it. So Docker Compose is literally made by just Docker Compose YAML, right? Now what a YAML is, YAML is basically nothing, but it's literal abbreviation is uh, yet another markup language. Yeah, that's how it started. But then it was changed. They thought, no, no, it's kind of not a markup language. So they called it to be uh, YAML ain't markup language now. So currently, if you go to Wikipedia or anywhere, you will see it as yet uh, YAML ain't markup language. But previously, it was designed to be yeah, uh, yeah, um, uh, yet another markup language, sorry. <laughs> So here we go and let's start writing a Docker Compose. So the first thing that I would like to write in my Docker Compose file would be just the version of it, right? It's just simple and straightforward, nothing too special about it, right? Uh -huh. So that's, I'm gonna use 3.4 and uh, version, yes, that's good. And 
Now, uh, in YAML file, you just have key and their values, right? That's all that you're going to define. And I'm going to tell you how do you define, a, a, it's just like a um, hierarchical based structure, that structure within structure will have a kind of uh, association to the parent of it with some space and indentations, right? Uh, I'll exhibit that, exhibit that if you don't understand that much. So here we go. So now we're going to define our microservices in it. And I write services, and the first service that I would like to build will be uh, not anything like uh, special, but it's just going to make a quite container. So let's just first, I'm going to define my backend uh, node, or I can just say backend node yt, which will be my YouTube backend, right? and not just yt and i'm just going to name that my microservice right this is where uh, this is will be my container with which my backend will run so then i can tell it to build my backend now what it's going to do it's just going to go to your backend folder and it's going to look for a docker file and it's going to execute that simple as that and then i can say once it's done we can uh, go to we can run the command node app and then I'm going to say, yes, I should define volumes, which is really important. Volume is basically that all that backend will be your, and remember this uh, directory, which we set in our container file, right? So that is going to be our directory here. We defined it, working directory to be USR, RSC app. So for a container, I'm going to say, put my volume here. And uh, then I can say, yeah, most important one would be the ports. And it's better to just take it down because there can be like tens of module volumes that can come in here if you have some sort of other files from another folder that you want to copy to your app folder, then you can do it as well. But I don't need to, I just have one folder. So I'm going to say then, Port that I want you to define uh, are uh, going to be, um, I can say 4008 this time, just to show you the distinction between them, or 4007 is better because we are working on that. Mm. Oh. Looks like I'm just going to take a port for now. Uh, then uh, we can say, I think that should be it for it. And there's lastly one thing to define here is networks, which you shouldn't worry about right now. And uh, I will just call it my YT network, my YouTube network for my YouTube app application that we're developing. And uh, ignore the network. Network is just that uh, uh, basically Okay, we'll skip that for 10 minutes later, okay? So right now I'm going to say, this is done for my service, like that's it what I want to write. Now see how I'm gonna define my second service is in this line. You know, I'm gonna have some identity, identity, that's, that's what's gonna define your Docker files, right? So my second service, really important, which is the main point of defining it. Uh, I'm gonna write uh, Neo4j, and here I'm going to say my new service will be Neo4j and I'm going to use its image to be uh, Neo4j and uh, 3.5 and I can, in fact I should say Neo4j uh, yt. It's better to just have it separate because I have another instance of Neo4j running in back and this is for me not for editorial is the proper instance. And uh, then I can say, of course, we need to define some ports for it. I can say, okay. And this is really important, guys, that uh, Neo4j defines 7474 as a port. So I'm sure you guys are familiar if you, because I'm probably sure that you guys are here for uh, to, she, to see the Neo4j, how to do it with Docker, not to learn Neo4j just. So you probably know it already. So it takes two ports always, 7474 and 7687. 
so I'm just going to change them for me and uh, we are going to say 7687 and what it's saying is that the second port that this port is basically coming from the container like what your application actually wants to use. I'm going to say when Neo4j uses 7474, assign it 17475 in my container so I can just see it on this port, not on this port, right? And uh, then I have to come here and let's now talk about our network. So we are going to define it here and let's just see it. We can just say my YT network, which we defined here. And then we can say it's driver. Now, driver is really important. Uh, in uh, near 40 you can drive your, uh, define your custom custom drivers as well. But we just use the uh, bridge network, which is going to basically uh, talk between containers. You know, we kind of bridge between containers that we are going to define. We have defined over here. So let's just. Uh, see what networks do we have quickly um yes so that's our my white network which i've created i haven't i haven't run it so uh we can just uh i've run it before so i can also change the name and once you just talk about that it will create a network for you and its type is uh, driver is bits bridge right so now let's run Docker Compose up and let's see if our project works or not. Oh, just creating a network, MS Docker with Driver Bridge, see? Oh, there is some problem with our cannot find module express, but to as I remember. Oh, because I am copying the volumes from here to there. Oh, sorry, that's my mistake. Oh, I'm not going to define any volumes right then. By the way, our new project was started, which is the point of this video, okay? <laughs> so I can just ignore that for now. And we can run, oh, sorry. So it's running up. So yeah, good news guys, it's built. Now why, what was my problem is that I defined another volume because I forgot that I'm just using uh, independently Neo4j just in the container. I'm gonna install this, uh, uh, all packages from the Docker file, not from my, you can also keep your packages in this folder and then you can just copy them. So for that, you should need to do that, but I just wanted to explain you in a different way, so I did it. So yeah, so it says that your interface is available. It will say 7474, but of course we are clever. You know, we changed the 7474 to 17475. So now let's just tack that up. Localhost 17475. Voila, guys. So that's amazing, right? That's perfectly fine. Now we have our Neo4j running on Docker. So I'm just going to say it's default powers of this Neo4j. So it's not the Neo4j driver. I don't know what it's talking about. Um, but anyway, we can just uh, fix it in the next video. And uh, in fact, I know what it's talking about. Wait, wait, wait. Um, here, yeah, bolt is changed to 7688, so I'm just going to do that here, 7688, right, perfect, so now it's working, uh, I'm going to change its password just for myself, and voila, that's it, that's it, now it's running. And you can see all your stuff is here and you can also write Neo4j or there is a command which I remember play movies and that's a given uh, thing into your database and you can just run these queries here to see what nodes does it create and I'm just going to show you a little bit of preview.
and it's creating them. Um, yeah, we got it. So yeah, that's a big database and I'm just gonna zoom out a little bit to get to a better view out of it. So I think we can just come here and see the full view. And yes. Here. So see guys that uh, this has created our graph database. Now imagine that all of this uh, in being something like uh, <laughs> a SQL based database. So all this data is given here and you can just, this is a basic creation, but then this tutorial will create many uh, complex things and you can just query that and use it with our new project. So we'll deep dive, uh, dive much deeper into it once it's running. So stay tuned for next video. We we're gonna create a proper application and we we're gonna do the front end in the next videos. I hope you get a good understanding on Diagon Post. So if you have any questions, just write down below and see you in the next video, guys. Bye-bye.